Hi, I'm Lawrence Brom, producer and film director at Shambhala Studios, and I want to welcome you all back for another evening uh, by the fireside here at our Shambhala Studio at Shambhala Ashram in our mountain retreat. Um, sorry, I have been kind of off uh, the YouTube channel for a, a couple of weeks because we've been on set filming. We're working on our upcoming production, which will be the sequel to our first production, Searching for the Lotus Born Master, uh, Eight Manifestations of Quantum Energy, and the second production, which was recently released, Return of the Lotus Born Master, Decrypting the Dakini Code. Well, the upcoming sequel will be the Dakini Code, Lotus Born Master and the Event Horizon. And I'm really happy a lot of you have written to us, you've expressed your thoughts, your ideas, comments, criticisms, ideas for improvement, and many of you have shared knowledge and information, which I think is extremely valuable. And in turn, I want to share that with everybody else. So tonight, we're just going to go through uh, some of the uh, comments and questions, and I'll give you both my response that I've done online, and maybe add a few more thoughts that we have uh, when we can sit together like this by the fireside and chat. So the first one is coming from Nico Durand. And Nico writes, we discovered in the past years that it is possible to store information in quartz crystal. Scientists from the Southampton University encrypted the Declaration of Rights of Man and of Citizens and the Christian Bible in quartz crystal. They think it is possible to even encrypt 360 TO information in a chip not bigger than a coin, and information can be saved 14 billion years in quartz crystal. This is very impressive, and in my opinion, it brings a lot of credit to the possibility that a past civilization saved some knowledge for future mankind with this technology and material. I remember for 15 years, I had a discussion with someone about a legend saying that past advanced civilization encrypted knowledge in crystal. He told me that it was impossible. Well, here we are now. And yes, I wrote back, yes, uh, Nico, crystal is so complex it can store vast amounts of information. But that very short answer, I don't think gave justice to his very, very extensive comment and I'd like to add more to that. Of course, in our sequel to the Searching for the Lotus Born Master, Return of the Lotus Born Master, what is that return? We're looking at the termas. We're looking at the secret teachings that were hidden, hidden in caves, hidden in mountains, hidden in the cloud. And what came up in that documentary was the use of crystal. Many of these holy sites in fact, were places that are caves that are made of crystal, or they have crystal in the rocks. Why is crystal so important? For precisely the reason that Nico explained, crystal stores information. And crystal has an amazing complex fabric that is so complex that like water, because crystal in a way you could say is petrified water, it is able to take information, all information is in the form of ones and zeros, and it can hold it for vast periods of time. So this is one reason why a lot of great yogis go to the caves and meditate, because many of these caves are made of very special minerals. Of course, inside you have access to the crystal. Actually, right behind uh, you know, our studio here in the mountain is a cave, and that cave is actually all crystal inside. It's raw crystal. And so, go there to meditate sometimes. And I think it's also very interesting because in our last film, we brought on a journalist who'd been covering China's space program. And he had explained how the quantum satellites, the quantum communication satellites, which are unhackable, are unhackable because the chips that the Chinese invented and developed are made of crystal. So crystal is a very powerful substance. We don't know enough about it. And certainly, we can understand why we are always using crystal as an offering to the Dakinis. There'll be more of that in the upcoming film, The Dakini Code, so stay tuned. And let's see, message here from Sengui444. 
um, came in about just two weeks ago. Dear Creator, you have great karmic connections with Guru Padma Sambhava. And he goes on to say, like in the 7th century, Guru Padma Sambhava told in far future, people can know everything just looking in the mirror. Please continue your good work. And of course, I thank Sengwe for uh, his support and for being on the journey with us. But let's talk for a moment about a mirror. Why are mirrors so important in the rituals of Tibetan Buddhism, of the Vajrayana rituals? Well, a mirror is actually a reflection of our mind. We, our own mind functions in many ways like a mirror. We are constantly reflecting the thoughts, the observations, the inputs that come to us. But if that mirror is clear, it can have great insight. So mirrors are often used for divination in certain rituals to be able to see the future. And they're also used as a reflection of our own mind. And they can be used to reflect away negative energies or forces that are coming to do harm to you. By many of the Takinis carry mirrors. Ati Chujijoma, who is going to be talked about extensively in the Takini code, is a Takini protectress who actually always carries a mirror and uses that to uh, both divinate the future and also to open up passageways, open up portals, and keep away negative energies. And of course, those portals are the portals of our mind. They're not portals out there anywhere. All of that is actually within us. So the mirror is a reflection of us. Thank you very much, Sengwe, for bringing this to our attention. And let's see what else we have here tonight. Hang on. Mm. Kali Dechastani. I love that name, Kali. Uh, Kali writes, all secrets are revealed simply by observing feeling the creation from a pure grateful heart. My energy flows in the wind. My tears follow the clouds to come embracing the high and low forms of ma, matter, mother, and mother, love, joy to all. Kali, thank you so much. That's like a poem. Thank you for sharing your joy with us. And we want to share your words with everybody else because it really touched us. And I love your name. Let's see who else we have here tonight. Oh, Kali wrote a longer piece. Wow. Kali, I'm going to read this whole thing to everybody because I think you have a lot to share with us tonight. Thank you, Lawrence, for sharing your journey to the enlightenment of your own density. As many are on the same path, our genetic baggage, which is trauma induced with collective memories, blocking us in a loop of drama feeding the beast inside, and so reflected outwards. The system of the beast, savage cannibalism, via corrupt program of manipulating the masses to feel you are not worthy of, wounded, starved, enslaved, abused, betrayed, responded with fight, flight, freeze, or fawning, feeding the reptilian animalistic brain and electricity feeding the machine auto PIE lot are all surging at this time of seemingly chaotic time of transcending the vibrational technology that kept this old age trance has been hacked hence awakening from our own made theater which kept us bud safe in our survival ponds while traveling into space on the m other matter ship which we are called to know how to operate correctly if life is to be saved maintained continued evolve we are home the operating codes are given to those who maintain the disciplines hidden in different regions and different religions and via a pure cooperative state are remembering to take the helm and thrust all homo sapiens sapien to claim stewardship of the precious cargo. This blue planet has life in all forms. The Dakinis are silent guardians who observe the hearts of men. No one has access to the codes who through torture, manipulation, refined technology. The time is here. The testing, the cleansing occurs for this reason alone. Who has washed their garments, cleansed their soul, shed all allegiances, worship, worship to old forms, words which cast spells of destruction, computer and simulation program, 
destroy all corrupt programming. Kali, that's cool. The Dakini offer us, my response to you on this was the Dakini offers the mind codes to disable the corrupt programming and set everything again. It's time for a reset. You know, technology can be used to do a lot of really great things, but it can also be misused. And right now I see so much stuff online creating anger and frustration, comparing who's who, creating jealousy, and creating all kinds of social anguish and conflict. Of course there's conflict on in society. It's being programmed. <coughs> it's being programmed by video games. It's being programmed by a lot of stuff that are on the social media platforms. Why are we doing this? It's time to bring everyone together. We have such a small planet. If we don't protect this tiny little planet, we're going to lose it. This is already happening. We see the natural disasters, diseases that have never been heard of before. These are all the things that Guru Pama Sambhava, the Lotus Bar Master, predicted. And now it's time for us to reach back into our spirituality, which is deeply connected with the naturalism of this planet in all religions. If we really go back into the religions, the philosophies of us people, the power is right here, it's in the planet, but we cannot let people manipulate minds with technology in a negative way that will create conflict. We have to come back to what our minds are. We have to awaken our minds. Give us our minds back. Don't let the computer take our minds, but we can use the technology in a way to benefit others if we have the power over our own mind. And guess what? That's going to be a theme of a future film, not a documentary, but actually a feature film that we're now already planning working on. So stay tuned and thank you, Kali, for bringing this to everyone's attention. That's fantastic.